So how do you turn lifeless desert sand into highly productive soil that doesn't even need watering? To find out, we travel to a remote part of the Sonoran Desert, one of the hottest and driest areas in North America and in the whole world. Shockingly, we drove through parts of this desert that have not seen rain for years. And I was surprised to learn that 90% of winter vegetables for the US are actually grown in the Sonoran Desert. It blows my mind that the vast majority of romaine lettuce consumed in the US is grown right here. Since it's a vegetable that doesn't provide a lot of calories or nutrition, furthermore, it doesn't tolerate heat well, it is growing in one of the hottest and driest places on the planet. The only reason that these greens can be grown here at all is thanks to the largest irrigation canal system in the world. It's known as America's Nile as it irrigates 255,000 hectares of cropland. The 80 mile long All American Canal originated from an ancient canal system where sustainable farming had been taking place for thousands of years. But now there are numerous hazardous farming practices that are threatening the lives of millions and the health and safety of the food produced has been rapidly declining. Romaine lettuce warning has now expanded. The CDC re recommending consumers not eat any romaine lettuce unless you can confirm that it didn't come from Arizona. At least 53 people in 16 states have been sickened with E. coli, apparently from romaine lettuce, 31 hospitalized. These desert plains, which were once a source of life, have now become a source of danger. The toxins that produce E. coli have been detected in water, air, and in plant tissue. The use of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers have resulted in degraded soils that have become contaminated with harmful heavy metals. The good news is, all of this can be turned around to grow healthy, nutritious food in the desert once again. And it all comes down to an intricate ecosystem that's right beneath our feet. Spectacular solutions are occurring on this desert farm, where they have spent eight years turning desert sand into highly fertile soil. By using cutting-edge new innovations that tap into incredible natural powers buried beneath the ground. As a result, every year they're having bigger and better harvests, which they have achieved by creating a growing system that is super adapted to the high temperatures, lack of rain, and the low fertility of the land that they're cultivating on. We met up with Esmeralda, who is in charge of the regenerative farms on the ranch, who kindly offered to show us around and explain what they're doing here. My name is Esmeralda Ramirez. I'm the regenerative agriculture manager here in Rancho Cacachilas. We're seeing each year like more production, more volume in terms of harvest, more improving of the soil. We use different techniques to produce food that not only has like a high level of nutrients, but also improving retaining water, humidity and native microorganisms. This farm has a practical agroforestry design as useful trees are being grown between the rows of vegetable crops, which has multiple uses and benefits for the farm. We work by sections. There's 15 sections total. And in between each section, we have a line of trees, which are mostly native trees or a tree that is good for us to use for the animals, like some kind of forage or for building. So why are these trees so useful in such extremely hot and dry desert conditions? So these lines of trees help us to make the more efficient use of shade. Here we get a lot of heat, a lot of sun directly to the plants. So these lines of trees help us to maintain the shade, maintain the moisture of the soil, help us retain water into the soil and also as windbreakers. In this region we have hurricanes every year, so it's very important to protect the plants. The only plants that we use this kind of greenhouse structure is the tomatoes and the lettuces. Tomatoes mostly because of the birds, and <laughs> they love it. We are kind of in a green oasis in the middle of the desert, so they come straight for the tomatoes <laughs> and also the lettuces because they are super tender, very fragile leaves. They need that extra protection. Mulch is like a, the most important thing here, like to cover and protect the soil. It's like a sunscreen. None of this would have been possible without what's going on on their second farm location. So to find out what they are doing there and why it's so important, 
Esmeralda took us to see the other farm, which is 10 minutes drive away. Across the property, this farm is located where they keep their regenerative goats and cheese factory. Here we also got our first glimpse of their regenerative goat herd. It's especially interesting because not only are they improving the environment, but Mickey, who's in charge of the goats, has a very unique way of communicating with these charming characters. We'll be covering them in a dedicated episode, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to be kept in the loop for that. So after taking a brief peek at the goat, Esmeralda took me over to see the seed farm, which completely exceeded my expectations, because upon entering through the quaint gate, I found myself surrounded by an abundance of colorful flowers set in a sea of lush green vegetation. It was like being transported into another world, and I have to say, it looked more like a country cottage flower garden than what people normally think of as a farm. Here's where we produce 80% of the seeds that we use in the main farm. So in this garden you will see a lot of flowers, a lot of herbs, aromatics, and the idea is to bring all the pollinators, insects, the birds. The point of this farm is to produce the best fruit that they can in order to save the seeds and plant them again the following season. Each generation, we keep the best seeds. So we select those individuals with the best characteristics in flavor, in shape, in color, that we want to preserve for the next generation. Saving seeds from some of their most successful plants each year is very important in an extreme climate like this, because the following year, they'll be planting seeds from plants which were most successful in their climate and conditions. We've been seeing a lot of improvement. Each year we have have a highest yield, we have more volume in our harvest, we donate our seeds in, in other areas like community gardens and we are seeing a lot of prosperity in those crops. Each year the seeds become better and better at growing well in that area. As they become more and more adapted to that climate, increasing the quality and the amount that they can be produced. Because they have become more heat tolerant, can handle low levels of rain, and are more resistant to pests and diseases of the region. However, the way they are turning sand into fertile soil involves something slightly more magical. And back at the ranch, Esmeralda revealed their secret formula. This is the desert soil, the natural soil. So what we've been doing for the last eight years in this farm is improving, adding organic matter, which is, which is gonna bring the life back. So this is the work that is showing in the soil after eight years. What you are seeing here is something truly amazing because they have transformed desert sand into dark, fluffy, fertile soil. And what's even more astonishing is this soil is actually able to keep itself damp in extremely hot and dry conditions. But how is this even possible? Well, it all begins with a special technique that they use with their composting. What we are doing with this compost, which comes from manure from our animals, is mixing it with fertilizer that comes from native microorganisms. Esmeralda is talking about the tiny life forms that live in the soil, called microorganisms, which are so small you need a microscope to see them. But despite their size, without them, there would be no life on Earth because they are essentially the unseen engine inside the Earth. They are the way soils function. Microorganisms work together to break down organic matter, cycle nutrients, and improve soil structure. Some of them can even break down heavy metals and pollution. We train to imitate the ideal soil in this area, like the perfect mountain soil, and replicate into our garden. Esmeralda has collected soil samples from some remote mountains in the region, where there are ancient oak forests because the soil here is highly fertile, it's full of climate-adapted, beneficial microorganisms. And incredibly, they can even keep soil damp in the desert. They do this by forming a layer around the soil particles, which is called a biocrust, and it acts as a sponge, absorbing and holding onto water. And some of the bioorganisms in the biocrust can also create a gel-like matrix that binds soil together forming a protective layer that traps moisture and reduces evaporation. Once we found a, a really nice, healthy, full of life soil where we can see good bacteria and fungus growing, uh, we bring it back. We mix this with our own compost, then we make it stronger. 
Esmeralda adds the mountain soil to the compost in a container. What we want to see here, it's a lot of fungus. So you see these white spots? These are good indicators that we have a lot of life. So this is good fungus. What you don't want to see is uh, colors like black, like purple, like orange. But when you see whitish and gray colors, those are the good ones. Although this will work on its own, Esmeralda adds another ingredient to help the microorganisms grow a bit faster. We add a sugar and a carb into a mix. We let that seal for 10 days and after that you should see the fungus and the bacteria just growing all around. The next stage is to apply them to the farm. One of these big buckets can be used in a dilution with water to irrigate one hectare of crops. You take two kilos from this bucket and then put it in a dilution with 200 liters of water. So you are doubling the growth of those microorganisms first into solid soil manure and then into a liquid form which goes easier into the irrigation. But little did I know that we were about to discover an incredible solution that can reduce harmful bacteria like E. coli from breeding in water. So let's find out how Esmeralda makes this mixture and how you can do it for yourself. This pillowcase is full of the other preparation we saw. And then the rest is just water with sugar. So this will impregnate with all of those fungus and bacteria. It smells like kombucha or apple cider vinegar. Exactly, something. it's a great probiotic but for the soil. Mm -hmm. And we could also eat it and drink it. <laughs> It might sound funny, but it's actually true. We can drink this. This is because some of the same good bacteria that needs to be in the soil also needs to be in our own gut. And this is the crucial reason why we need to eat food grown in healthy soils. By adding a probiotic to the irrigation system, not only does the soil stay moist for longer and need less watering, it also has all the healthy bacteria needed to stop and eradicate dangerous bacteria from thriving. At the core of all of this are the root systems of mushrooms and fungi called mycelium, which spreads through entire regions, connecting trees and plants through the soil. And it actually allows them to communicate and share nutrients to help each other grow or when they are sick. Similar to the internet, except for plants and underground organisms. Right before applying it, we turn on the pump, the oxygen pump, just to produce all of that, and then goes directly into the irrigation system. Are you Three. making this quite frequently? Or? Yeah, right now in the season, yeah. We try to make one each week, and then to apply it to the whole garden. When this is ready, we put these 200 liters of fertilizer into a 1,000 liter container of water. So it's another dilution. What is so great about this is that anyone can do this for themselves, just from a handful of soil from a nearby forest. There's a lot of nutrients in this soil naturally, a lot of minerals and microminerals, but the root system can have access to those without the living beings so we need organic matter and we need biodiversity so the roots from all these vegetables can have access to those minerals and then those are the rich nutrients and flavors that the vegetables are going to have. What's so remarkable about this farm is the combination of groundbreaking greening the desert projects they are demonstrating because as well as growing food, they are greening an entire mountain range which is so successful that there are now rivers flowing with water all year round and there's so much vegetation it's actually raining there during the dry season. If you want to see a full tour of this farm and find out about the five varieties of tomatoes that they're growing, to take a tour of the different trees they're using, see the farm's wormery, then make sure to check out our Patreon where we have uploaded an extended version of the video. Thanks again to all our members and subscribers for making videos like this happen.